All right. So hi and welcome to our July 27th uh, Chaos Science Working Group meeting. It's great to have you here. A um, couple of things that I just wanted to, to talk about today. So it's not a huge agenda, um, but I, I think it'll be helpful. So one, um, this is a lot for you, you, Melissa. So we're we have chaos liaisons. I don't know if we've talked about this in the past. Sort of. Okay, so we have Anita who's joining us and Basayo and Sean, who are going to serve as liaisons for this group. And so what that means is they'll attend, <clears throat> excuse me, they'll attend this meeting and kind of just listen to the conversations and kind of identify where we have new metrics or new metrics models that need to be developed so that we don't really have to do kind of that initial development push here. Um, you know, we can always just write down notes and all that kind of stuff, but it's kind of assembling those notes um, into our templates. And a lot of that work will be done in the chaos common working group meeting, which Melissa, you this is then the abstraction, like folks like Karthik, you know, or you or Anessa who join here don't have to attend that meeting as we kind of build the metric or the metric model in a way that is usable for this group. Well then, um, so Anita or Basayo or Sean will kind of do that initial development, bring it to the common working group and we'll kind of go through the chaos mechanics at that, you know, there, kind of abstracting you all from this. Um, and then the metric or metric model will be obviously brought back here so that we can, you know, give it a review and just kind of make sure that it's telling the story that we want to tell. Um, and then the metric or metric model can be published. So that's what the liaisons are providing, kind of liaising between this group and the group inside of chaos that, that does a lot of the actual metric and metric model development work. So thank you to Anita, Basayo, and John. So they, yeah. should, they should be here uh, regularly in this meeting, and um, that'll be great. We will help liaise and get the work done inside the chaos. Yes. <clears throat> Anita or Basayo, do you just want to say hi or introduce yourself real fast at all? Oh, yeah, sure. Hey, everyone. I am Anita Human, and um, I am happy to be a liaison here. We're super um, happy to be here. Basayo? Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Basayo Ojo, and um, similar to Anita, I'm also very happy to work with you all on July Thanksgiving. Thank you. This is great. So thank you so much. And I, I Anita and I think Basayo, you know, I, I don't know what time it is for you. So thanks for staying later in the day if it is later in the day for you. No, it's around 4 p.m. 4 yeah. p.m. Okay. Yeah. Not, not terrible. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes though at four o'clock my brain is starting to already go downhill. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that might be a function of my age though too so <laughs> i'm not sure all right so um got, there was an action item from last time which was to to move this contributor experience contributor community health discussion into a metric model but I'd like to just, I kind of cleaned it up. I tried to go through some of the text that was in there. There was a little bit of repetition here and there um, and tried to just kind of organize things in the sense that like the user stories, you know, kind of start with maintainer contributor experience lead. We then move into community member and as a new contributor. So I just tried to kind of, you know, organize things this, so that they were a little bit linear. Um, we also had kind of a series, and we'll talk through this a little bit more, but we had a series of metrics that were proposed, and there was some longer text as to why those particular metrics were proposed. I just worked to reduce that text, so I didn't change any of the, um, like, the nature of what was being said. I just tried to make it a little bit, like, faster to read kind of thing. Um, these these continue to stay empty, at least for the time being, just because we haven't put anything like this into practice. So it's hard for us to comment like essentially these are um, these would be like you, you, Melissa, like taking a look at these metrics and then providing us, a, you know, this is how they helped us in our particular community, kind of helping others understand how they are helpful to you. So I think what needs to be done still on this um, 
metric model and Anita Sean Basayo. This is like a perfect example of maybe bringing this to, to common or helping build this out. But um, Melissa, I think you were kind of one of the lead authors, or at least I think you put together a lot of this originally. And could you could you get just kind of speak out loud like why something like this matters to you from your position? Yeah, so I think um, there have been a number of attempts in the past to kind of use metrics to determine community health. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a couple of things. One is we don't necessarily feel like general metrics on open source community health are appropriate for scientific projects. There are particularities that we feel need to be addressed differently. Um, uh, and a couple that are mentioned here. So um, that is one side of it. The other is that we have been working with this um, kind of new position of contributor experience lead. Now, this is not at all particular to scientific open source. But at the same time, there are new concerns that uh, come up when we start doing this work and that we didn't know how to measure, had no idea how to effectively, you know, understand if this work is being helpful or not, if there's different directions which we should explore, um, that kind of stuff. So that is the initial um assessment, I would say, and why we are doing this in particular, and like the goal of having metrics at all, of actually evaluating project health or sustainability or that kind of stuff, I think comes down to, well, first of all, understanding our communities and how we can better serve them, but also with regards to funding and uh, justifying not only direct funding, but also in-kind support, for example, from companies. Uh, a lot of these communities are purely volunteer-based, and we want to understand how to um, both give credit to people for the work that they're doing in the communities and also recruit more people, basically, mm -hmm. to make sure that the projects are sustainable. Um, yeah, that's a little rambly, but <laughs> I hope it makes sense. This is a this is exactly it. Like you go ahead and just <laughs> all words and then we'll work to, <laughs> to get it to get it done. Because we'll put the why it matters is usually in paragraph form the way that we present these, so we can kind of smooth that out. Um, okay, that's that's great. Um, and then the user stories, I, they they seemed good to me. I don't know if you see anything in there. You know, we could work on kind of that this part once it comes back to us. But I thought they all yeah. seemed very reasonable. I, I, the the only thing that I feel is that there may be a lot more, and it would be helpful to get input and feedback from other folks working in this space just to get more, you know, understanding yep. of how this works on their on their communities. Like I said before, me and Anessa and a lot of the people involved uh, that that we regularly talk. Uh, about this with, they are usually involved in bigger projects. So okay. NumPy, SciPy, Jupyter, uh, Pandas, you know, huge projects with a lot of stakeholders and some kind of support, like we are in a stable position. It's not representative of the smaller university-based projects or like that are just getting started, you know, so that that is the only thing that concerns me is that we're not capturing that side of things. Okay. Um, there may be there, there may be something to be said about a, a different metric model or a different model for that for those types of questions because they might be a different set set of questions. Um, I think one of the things we try to um, be cautious of is overloading a metric model that it does that you get it that it just does too many things in one mm -hmm. model. Um, okay. Um, to that. To that end, to I guess you know, as you're trying to for you, Melissa, as you're trying to think through why it matters and and how it can help different people, as described in these user stories, this is probably a larger set of metrics than we usually do in a metric model, mm -hmm. and the reason that we like to keep it 
fairly small is the metric models are meant to just kind of you've heard this phrase move people off zero or just kind of help people like move into this space and as we can add complexity a little bit later and so if you have our concern is is that sometimes if, if there are too many metrics in a metric model somebody might look at this and be like i can't do all of these 10 things immediately so yeah, there's like a trade-off where people yes. want the metrics models to simplify and if we make the metrics models too complex then people are again overwhelmed with data which is kind of one of the motivations for building metrics models yes. so it's a, it's a weird circle it's, yes <laughs> <laughs> so you can probably see where the question is gonna come to you which is like are there particular metrics in this model um to which this could be one This still needs to to be developed but um are there certain ones in here that you are kind of seeing as like really important first steps um so you well, mean I'm asking you to wait one up. that would stay right <laughs> yeah so the the ones like the ones that are the most important to get people engaged with thinking about this what are those first metrics? So I, I'm asking you to to kind of provide like some value, like mm -hmm. if you label inclusivity. I'd give it a one out of ten. Mentorship is a nine out of ten. You know what I mean? So I I made that up. It's not like I don't. So, know. So no yeah, matter. yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, this is really hard, actually. <laughs> And this could be an action item for you to think about. Yeah, I, I think I would need like I would like to discuss this maybe with Anissa as well to see her perspective on this, because I feel like we've been working um, on these kind of, you know, together at the same time. So it's really hard for me to give one that is uh, gotcha. top of mind. But I, yeah, if, if I can think a little bit about that, I think it would be helpful. That would be great. That's not a problem. And then okay. I think, you know, the other thing that you could think of in that regard too, is if, if the metrics that are maybe not included, and you could say they all must stay, then that's fine. We'll just go from there. But mm -hmm. um, if there are others that are not included, like, could they find a home in a different metric model? Like, can we split the... Yeah, definitely. Exactly. That's what I'm it? thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. And I think, uh, for example, I don't know how we can couple these things together because a few of those, including, for example, inclusive leadership or, um, you know, those are already kind of pre-included in other models that complement this one. But I don't know how these things come together. Well, hold that thought because we'll, we're actually going to, we'll, we'll talk about that. Okay. Too. Okay, cool. <laughs> We've we've kind of started structuring that that conversation in the corporate OSPO space and in the oh, space, just as a way that we can start thinking about where metrics or metrics models kind of fit in telling a larger story. And I think it'll be really, I think it'll be useful in a couple of ways. So let me just make some awesome. notes here. Um, so. Um, just kind of revisit the existing metrics model. Does that make sense? I don't know if you see me typing, but just revisit with an eye on reducing the number of metrics and then if they are removed, may want to think about perhaps the development of a new metric model that would support those. Yeah, sure. that sounds great. Thank okay. you. Also, just as a side note, I have to say that um, at SciPy, Mm -hmm. We had a number of different talks about metrics 
Um, Sofia Vargas was there. Amanda Kasari was there yep. talking about metrics. There were other people discussing these and in, in, in like other contexts and the context of community health, but also, um, you know, in other contexts. And it was very interesting to see. It seems like there's a bubbling up of this subject. <laughs> Good. Well, we are there to receive that. We like Bubble. bubbles. <laughs> We do. We've always liked bubbles. <laughs> that's that's we. That's great. Hopefully, chaos came up. I would suspect that. Uh, yeah, and Sophia was there, so okay, um, yes, of course. And, and it was a keynote, <coughs> and, and it was a very interesting keynote. So uh, um, I think a lot of people started thinking a little bit about that also after okay. the keynote. Um, great. Okay, that's good to hear. Um, hey, Armstrong. It's nice to have you here. Um, okay, so I had hey. Um, so oh, I know what I was gonna say. One thing that was on here, um, this this metric. So this one, I think we just need to develop this metric. I'm gonna be real honest with you. This has come up time and time again, not just here, but over and over. Sean, this mm -hmm. is one that you have pushed. Like I'm always pushing. Yeah, so there's this this notion of second contributions and how to identify yeah people. That yeah, it's one of the main. Yeah, it's what uh, yeah in the the report the things that people look at very frequently are new contributors and then which of our new contributors come back and make a second contribution, and how many new contributors do I have over a time frame, and. We have we have the data in Augur. Do we? We probably don't have a metric for this though. So no, that's the funny. I could I could probably write a cool. metric just reverse engineering what we did in Augur. Well, okay, I'm just gonna put that on my thing. And 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 Anita and Basayo as well. I think this is yeah. a, a really great example of where the liaison can help as well. So, um, oh my gosh, all right. Of the second contribution metric that's in there and, uh, I'm glad to hear this is something that other people are thinking about because <laughs> uh, yeah it seems kind of obvious when you think about it and you do the work but then you don't see a lot of people talking about it outside of this space so I'm, I'm glad you folks are bringing it up Oops, this would just be a metric. So then this from a process perspective, talking about the liaisons above, like Sean, Anita, and Basayo, like I just gave an action item to the liaisons here to help kind of develop this metric in, a, in the template that we have. We can talk about it in common, in the common working group, and then bring it back here as well. And I, I think I have a, not even a sense, I know that this metric will be one that a lot of people will be really happy to see. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Maybe it's just part of me too. I'm tired of seeing it without a link. Because <laughs> it, it seems like we've talked about it for we, so, is so it, long. I guess I should know the answer to this question, but I'm going to dare to ask it anyway. Do we have a first, a new contributor metric deployed? Uh, we do. Okay, so I, I thought we did, but I yeah wasn't positive. That's okay. In fact, that I want you to now, Sean, list all eighty all eighty metrics, metrics. Yeah, that we have I, developed. I'm gonna get some flashcards and study for <laughs> it, like it's the law exam or something. <laughs> you need it's to like know the, all of them. <laughs> take the chaos bar. <laughs> list every with with the <laughs> the description of what it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Okay, great. Um, Anita or Basayo, do you have any questions just in terms of kind of what the the ask, the action item is here? Okay, so you said you would share um, the templates in commons. I don't know, is that like another meeting? Yeah, so the common work group meeting, um, it's on Thursdays. Do you have okay. the Elizabeth really handy? It's Thursdays, I think, at this time, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, I think that uh, it's, it, it trades off weeks with this. Yeah, so it's this time, but next week. 
So it's, yeah, off, offsets the same. That's the word I was looking for, offsets. Thank you, Elizabeth. Okay, so um, at the common working group is where we discuss on how to um, bring these particular metrics out. Correct. It's, okay. in the, it's in the common working group that we'd actually develop it. And so, like, if you come, I don't know if this is quite updated yet, because we've been working on it, but community templates. Here's our metrics template. It's not there yet, but um, I can point you to the metrics template that we use. Just it's not we're getting there. <laughs> it's it's getting available. It might be available. Come this way, Elizabeth. Do you know if it's here? It should be. Yeah. yeah. So it would just the name, you, basically, you would just take this template and start a Google Doc, and we can help you do that as well. And you would just name the metric in that Google Doc, like whatever, the reten newcomer retention or something like that, um, or contributor retention, newcomer retention is probably it. Uh, just a brief description on what we talked about here. This is a metric that you know identifies um, newcomers beyond their first contribution or something like that. And honestly, it's at that point we would just talk about it in common as to what the objectives of such a metric might be. And we would just kind of spell that out. And then in terms of like, implementation, all of this stuff, that would probably be blank in the common meeting for the time being. It's really probably a lot about just kind of developing this first part. And once we do that, we would bring it back here to this meeting on like in two weeks to Melissa and Anessa and folks here. And they would read the description, take a look at the objectives and be like, this is this aligns with kind of how we're thinking about it too. Um, so that that's kind of the process here. Okay. Cool. All right, great. Um, okay, super. Anything else on on this on this metric model for the time being? I think the one action item is really for you, Melissa, at this point. Yeah. This. Okay. And then the other action item that came out about it is to develop this metric. Okay. Great. Um, I'm going to move on. Okay. So, all right. So, I'm sure, Sean and Elizabeth are tired of seeing this, but <laughs> no, I, I, I'm actually getting my bunker decorated with that. Oh, well, well, so to have a large three, size. Three so different have versions. To, yeah. So, Melissa, what this is, is we have this this image, and I think you've seen this before, but this image that you're seeing here is an image that we're, we're using in the OSPO, the corporate OSPO and the university space. And the, different, the difference between them is what's in these boxes is going to naturally be different, like for the needs that you would have with respect to scientific communities, with respect to what a corporate OSPO might have, you know, but there may, there may be some overlap. And so, Partly what we're doing here is, is we're using like we're using these models in the university and corporate OSPO working groups. And the intention is to help us understand kind of what the goals and the questions are that we're trying to address. And, and then and only then can we kind of identify the metrics or metrics models that help kind of address those questions. So for what we were just looking at with respect to this contributor experience, you know, the last metric model, like that metric model 
will ultimately, and then this list can change at the top, but it'll ultimately help inform your better understanding of, of one of these things, right? So that's the intention that this model will ultimately kind of lead to a better understanding of something kind of at a higher level. Um, so the intention is that it can help provide focus on the metrics and the models that we are developing, that they're not just kind of a random assortment of metrics and metrics models. And there's a clear story to tell people, like if, if they're like, why is this model helpful? You're like, well, I can actually tell you because it helps us better understand community growth, for example, or something like that. Um, these are not these are not going to be perfect columns. There will necessarily be overlap between them. So, like, you know, I don't know, software maintenance could be connected to community decline. You know what I mean? It obviously this is mostly just kind of a rhetorical structure to help us talk about things. And yes, there will be some overlap between them. Um, and then lastly, part, part, part of why I'm really interested in, in having a model like this that's shared across them is that my hope is, is that we will like take whatever is developed here in the scientific software community working group along with the university and corporate and kind of hold them up to the light. And we're like, there's actually a little bit of overlap here in one of the columns or in one of the cells. And that overlap is, is something that we can then kind of standardize across all of them. And it'll just give us a little bit of help because I, I would suspect that as this is developed here and the one in the university, that it won't be a, a unique set of eight, in this case, cells. I'm guessing there's probably some overlap and it'll just help us kind of build our language. And if there is overlap, what we learn in OSPO can help in the corporate OSPO space can help in the the scientific software space and vice versa. So I'm trying to just build some some kind of connections between between all of them. And there will be definitely some uniqueness between them, which is totally cool as well. Um, so that's that's what I'm doing here. So um, the the way that this this works is that we have and this these are not meant to be a maturity model. I want to make that real clear. So we had, I had, this was originally proposed as a maturity model, um, but the concern was, is that like different projects are just kind of in different states all the time. Different corporate open source program offices are in different states all the time. And like maturing in the, <coughs> to the, you know, Microsoft open source program office is probably not an aspiration that every, every corporate OSPO has. And it's not bad that you don't tragically, start. tragically. <laughs> you're just never going to get there. You have like one person in your OSPO, for example, like you're just not ever going to do all the things versus a Microsoft OSPO, which has a whole lot of other people. Um, so these are not meant to be maturity models. And so there's no order to the, the columns here. So the top box is not more important than the bottom box and the leftmost column is not more important than the rightmost column. This is, there's no, no importance there. All right, so um, as far as the scientific software communities are concerned, um, I, I took a, I added these and these were only based on, I had kind of gone through this discussion that we had last week, because we had kind of, or a month ago, believe it or not, we had kind of talked about this um, back then. And this feels very imperfect <clears throat> to me at this point, these functions. And so I'm, I'm offering them here as just a starter for change, <laughs> expecting that they will change. Um, and so I'm hoping we could maybe spend a little time on what those functions could be from your perspective, and these are the highest level things that you would care about. And so I'll talk through just real briefly the four that I had proposed here. And again, I am I do not love any of these, and if they all four change, I don't care. So there did seem to be a discussion about wondering if the, the community was growing or in a state of decline, just kind of what the, from a, oftentimes from a, um, like a community member perspective. Are we getting new people? Are they staying around? Um, and 
growth or decline, again, in this case, is not a good or bad thing. Growth could be terrible. As you know, decline could be completely fine. Um, but they're just ways for you to understand kind of the trajectory of, of people in the project. The second one was um, this analysis to sustainability. So this was, do you remember this that Karthik had brought up? That it was about that not every project is necessarily going to go into this like long-term sustainable kind of mode that there are different projects that may just sit in a prototype phase forever or they were on the analysis side like they were developed as part of a research project I think that's what that left most is and they really they don't really leave the the research team so the only reason I brought this one in was because it had come up in that discussion that it might be interesting to kind of understand where projects maybe are themselves in these different forms. Okay, that was the second one. The next one was that came up in the discussion with software maintenance. So how do we think about the long-term maintenance of software, whether we have a community that does exist around that or if it's an important project, but there's no longer funding for it. And we have some sort of tail off. We need to maintain this or have some, some sort of stabilizing mechanism to in place. So that was software maintenance. And then ecosystem alternatives or ecosystem, something like the position of the project in relation to others. So maybe not alternatives, but like ecosystem position or something like that. I, I don't know what that what that one quite was. So those are the four that I had proposed. And again, it was only based on this conversation, loosely based on this conversation. And so I'm, I'm interested as to, to what your reaction is. I think that sounds um, pretty appropriate. Um, <clears throat> I think, so I particularly like the, and, and I think that was Karthik's point last time, which is the, the analysis to sustainability includes also, do we need to evolve? Do we need to grow? And um, how do we want to uh, move forward? Not assuming that every project needs to grow and needs to be sustainable forever. I think that's very good. Um, in the maintenance, you said you include funding and kind of like community um, influx of people or not and retention, I think, is that all or is yeah. that more on community growth? But I know you said, you know, there will be overlap between the columns. And I think that's one case probably where you have prob potentially you have an overlap between software maintenance and community growth or decline. Yeah. And so just like rhetorically, we would just put it in one place. Yeah. Just, we yeah. understand that it can help under sure. possibly inform growth, but yeah. Yeah. I want to say for the last one, I would also maybe uh, propose ecosystem interaction or um because I, I see exactly what you mean. I also don't know a word for it, <laughs> which is <laughs> um the the how you are. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but I can totally see what you mean, which is the interaction between your project and the larger ecosystem. Does that help? Do you have enough connections? Do you have enough communication to know who are your downstream users, for example, and That's understand exactly their needs? Is. And is, yeah, exactly. Is there failure in the upstream that I yeah. care about, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. And then alternatives, yeah. that had come up only because just what it is, there might be alternatives yeah. to us in the ecosystem. And if we're in a state of decline and we don't have good maintenance, and, then guess what? Yeah, and I can give you I can give you a very uh, concrete example of that if there's time, yeah. just so that it like the point is very clear. Currently, we're having discussions uh, around array library. So think of NumPy, TensorFlow, you know, a number of different uh, PyTorch, they all have their own implementation of arrays. And there is this array API consortium that is trying to get everybody to have the same API so that you can have interoperability between these libraries. 
So I think that's one good example, for example, of, you know, if NumPy didn't buy into this, we might be left behind because uh, the new implementations are able to interact with GPUs and we're not capable of doing that. But because we all have the same API, we're all playing together, uh, chances are that we'll live on for longer. That completely makes yeah. sense. <laughs> I think that makes a lot of sense. Just to come back to the ecosystem interaction or alternative, I think we are talking about the ecosystem perspective. We have projects that belong to an ecosystem and there are projects that uh, surrounds an ecosystem. For example, the NumPy is a project where it is built around an ecosystem of scientific computing. So when we talk about uh, NumPy, Pandas, and all the mat plotly, they form an, that scientific ecosystem, but they are not ecosystem intrinsically. Then we have projects that are completely like OpenStack is an ecosystem. Kubernetes is a project around an ecosystem. So that category really for, forms ecosystem perspective. Then we can talk about different types of ecosystem. For example, the Apache ecosystem is quite different from the Linux kernel, which is an ecosystem like OpenStack. And there are different types of ecosystems then. Now, if we talk about that sustainability, like what Matt uh, explained earlier on the growth and decline, not all projects were designed for long-term uh, sustainability. But within that definition of the pro program, were they sustainable within their own rights? For example, if you design a project, or well, let's say a piece of work, to launch a, a special role, and you will never do that again in the next 50 years. Why will you keep that code? Why will you keep that project? It has done its part, it has end its lifespan. So we can look at sustainability that from the technical point of view at that point, where the dependency of the library handled properly. So sustainability should really be seen as a higher level construct on, upon which all these others can now be seen as how do you implement at these various timestamps. I can talk more about this, it's just for time, I'll keep it here now. That was, Thank you, that was great, yeah. Yeah, that was great. And actually that was interesting, the Armstrong, your first conversation about <laughs> ecosystems. I had my like vision when I wrote that word was like dependencies. It was basically that. That was like that was where my head went. Not like the scientific software ecosystem. That's a different, different and, and really interesting way of looking at it. So thank you for that. Okay, so just in the kind of in the interest of time, we have like five minutes. And so we can continue. Well, obviously, I want to finish all of this today. We have seven minutes. We must. <laughs> So, so part of, I think, maybe what the, the, an action item is for everybody, like, is just to just maybe think about this top row. And if, and if that's not the most appropriate thing, again, I don't care. I'm just trying to, to like, get this conversation started. I don't, let's not, for the sake of just moving this forward, I don't want to make it too much bigger. So I don't want to go to a fifth column quite yet. Um, just from a management perspective, because you'll see it kind of, it, it, as we go down, it kind of fans out a little bit in terms of how we think about metrics and metrics models. So pretending that community, <clears throat> excuse me, growth and decline is one of them. Oops. What I would do is then you put that here and you put that here. All right. So these become those things. And then for community growth and decline, we would have a set of two goals that we're trying to understand with respect to community growth and decline. So um, the goal might be to, you know, increase I don't know what it might be, but something along these lines where I'm trying to to actually build my the the community member base. And this is all from the point of view of the project, right? Yeah, that's generally where I Mm -hmm. That's generally where I am, because we've in the other cases, it's always from the point of view of the OSPO. So I think that's the best place to be. 
in terms of, so I, I, that's a great question, but, and communities are a little bit different because there are times where we're kind of outside looking into a community and I'm trying to understand if this one's any good for me kind of thing. Um, but yeah, let's, let's put ourselves in the position of like you <laughs> as the, as a community manager thinking about, thinking about the community. So that may or may not be a goal that you care about with respect to, to community growth or decline. And then, I mean, our, our inverse of that is, and these aren't questions quite yet, but, you know, decrease. I don't know why you would want to do that. <laughs> well, I think there's a question of, um, do we, the question that I would ask myself is, um, is what we have enough? Because okay. I think that 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 would lead me to make decisions as in, oh, I don't need to, for example, we have decided a long time at NumPy that we don't need new users. Gotcha. We have millions of users. That's good enough. We don't need that anymore. Gotcha. Um, so we're not investing in actions that will bring us more users. We're focusing on other stuff. Does that make sense? Yes. So having enough um, like number engagement. Yeah, that you can sustain and that you can support. actually engage with. Yeah. Support activities. So, well, something like that. No, is that's what you're saying. So, like, one might be to increase member engagement, and this may not be in your case, but the other might be to just to the goal of, of having enough to do the work that needs to get done. Okay, that's totally fair. So then the the question would be, these are just examples, and we can carry this forward because you have three minutes. So then... Um, questions like are my are the number of contributions um, increasing? Like this would just be this is this goal question metric approach, and then from a metric perspective, it would just be like um, you know. Um, PRs by new people, something like that. That would be a, a yeah. That so if I'm looking at a metric and I'm like, hey, over the course of the last six months, I had maybe this is like again, we can work with this, but like from new people, this would basically be the new contributor as I just changed it, but PRs by new people, reviews by new people, something along these lines. So I'm, I'm just getting a sense that the number of PRs that are coming into my project by new members has been going up over time. So that's giving me a good understanding that I'm getting an increase in new member engagement. It doesn't tell me if people are leaving the project, but it just, it gives me an insight into that one spot. So. At this point, what we do is you come up with a series of questions that if you could get a perfect answer, it would give you insight on this particular goal. Yeah, that makes total sense. And then we would do that for this. Some of these should be harder. This one might not be, this would probably be the easiest of this list mm -hmm. here just in terms of the metrics that we have available to look at things. Um, and so then we would go through this process across all of these, giving ourselves a series of metrics or metrics models that can help inform that question, that build into that goal, that give me insight into this particular function. And so then the metrics have a home <laughs> in that they're really trying to address a particular mm -hmm. thing for you as a community manager? Oh, I think this is very helpful, actually. Um, I think it helps make it more concrete. And yeah, and it, it moves us off of like metrics for metrics sake. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. Which is like, there's the tendency to why go- Why do I actually want to do this? Yeah. Yeah, like, I'm yes, I'm doing PRs by new people, but where do I put it? <laughs> like, how does it help? Yeah. And I think too, it, it can help us as we build this working group to also, as we help with people and talk about this, or if you're at a conference, like here are the metrics that we have, here are the mm -hmm. questions they're answering, and we can kind of build it up and kind of give a visual to people that they may be able to use uh, in their own particular context. Mm -hmm. So. No, that makes sense. So do you want, um, 
because I'm happy to work on this, you know, until the next meeting. Yeah. Do you want suggestions there on that presentation? Should I take notes yes. elsewhere and then we can no, discuss no, no. them this would during be the, the perfect meeting? Spot. This would be, okay. I would love anything here. And, you know, okay. maybe the first thing is just to look at these across the top. Are those four yeah. the most sensible places to start? Yeah, that, that's actually super helpful for me as well, because um, <laughs> so my grant is ending on August 31st. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be probably leaving the contributor experience lead as a paid role, and I'm going to be moving into a volunteer role for that position. And yeah, I have to do a report and it, it would be interesting to also kind of understand where we are here. Like if, if we can um, have a, an idea of these metrics and what we want to measure and how we want to measure effectiveness of our, our own work. This is exactly the stuff that I'm thinking about right now. Perfect. So <laughs> it, it is helpful for me as well. Okay, well, look at that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you down. <laughs> uh, AI. To take a look at the functions and maybe goals. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, no, this is like top of mind for me right now. So this is great. All right. Well, we're we're two minutes over. It's good to see everybody. We'll be back with a couple uh, metric next time and continue the discussion here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.